that beautiful blessing to be monogamous and to be set, right? The Lord is the Lord of covenant. But there are many people who participate in the beauty of congregation, in the beauty of culture, in the beauty of the ecclesia, receiving the blessings but not entering in on their part of the covenant and being responsible in how they're supposed to steward those blessings. Covenant responsibility is important. Amen. Because if you keep covenant with the Lord and are responsible for what he gives you, what's the scripture say? If you're faithful with a little, he will make you faithful with much. He will continue to provide because you're being responsible with the blessings. You are owning the values and participating in community. Why is this important? Because I think we're beginning to live more and more in a culture that is just out for self-gratification, our own philosophies and what we want to have individually. In our nation, in cities. But I want you to know that we are a covenant family at El Shaddai. And we believe in covenant. And we believe in the blessings that come with covenant. But if you want to receive the blessings of the new covenant, you have to be responsible and repent and call on the Lord and be saved. Right? Without your part of that covenant, you will not receive the salvation and the blessings that come with it. How do I know this? John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Well if the whole world is love. Why is not the whole world saved? Why isn't 7 billion people. Walking in the covenant of salvation. Because God loved them. Because love isn't enough. Just speaking about it. And knowing about it. You have to respond to it. We have a responsibility. To see what was given, receive what was given, and then walk in what was given. Amen? Amen. Covenant is so important. <clears throat> Membership in a family is important. How many of you here are a member of a family? <laughs> How many of you here are a member of extended families? Right? You've been married and you have the in laws and everybody in your life, right? Your children grow up and they get married and have children, and the families and households grow. I love this picture. The Bible is made up of 66 books the Old and the New Covenant. It is our membership handbook. <laughs> To be part of the kingdom of God, part of the family of God, we have to read the values and the covenantal laws and the commandments and the beautiful values of the handbook. Amen. Mm. Amen. It teaches us how to live in community, how to live in communion with God, how to live in communion with one another, how to live in communion with a fallen world. How to live in communion with Jews and Gentiles and people from every culture. The Bible is a covenant handbook for humanity. The old and new covenant merge together, revealing the moral heart of God and God's desire to have family. To see redemption. It's such a good picture. To get the benefits of a home, you have to be a member of the family. If you're not a member of the family, how are you going to get the benefits of the home? Lots of people like to talk about that the scripture doesn't talk about membership. It talks about membership a lot, actually. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 12. And I am 
looking to do this on my iPhone. Uh-oh. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> Low Tech Todd. <laughs> Trying to step it up a little bit. <laughs> First Corinthians. 12. I'm going to start in verse 12. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Now this is Rav Shaul speaking to the ecclesia in Corinth about how to live in community and about the new covenant establishment of community and how to be a member of that community and what the benefits of that community are and what the responsibilities of that community are. For as one, for as the body is one and has many members, everybody say members. members. The body has members, yes, there it is. But all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Messiah. For by one spirit, we were all immersed into one body. Whether Jews or Greek, whether slave or free, we all have been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. I love that picture. One body, many members. One, not just one member, but many members. You know, and, and he goes on, we're going to go through this chapter a little bit together here in the picture of the body. Yeshua is the head, you know, and, and the body's made up of hands and fingers and ligaments and brain and all of the other parts of the body, right? But the only way that body thrives, the only way the members of that body thrive is by being connected to the body. If you disconnect an arm, it turns purple, rots, and goes away. That arm has to be connected to the body to receive the life stream blood flow of the body. To be strong and healthy, to receive the, the, the vitamins and the proteins needed to function as a body. I believe that the Lord is talking about membership here in a local congregation. Ooh. Boy, that's a stretch, huh? <laughs> I think that many of us like to feel and read this scripture like, yeah, we're all believers, all believers are together, and we have this big global family. That's true. We have a huge global family. When I go to another nation, and I go to connect with that nation, what's the first thing I look for? A congregation I can go to in that nation. <laughs> The body of believers that I can connect to. That while I'm there, I can be connected to those who are part of the family of God. Yeah. I don't want to just disconnect from El Shaddai and be a flopping arm in El Salvador. I want to go and connect. That's the beauty of CARP. Ginger and Pat are longtime members of our congregation. They serve and have responsibility in our congregation, but they also travel to another nation and connect with another body of believers there. They didn't want to go in and just bring help from El Shaddai congregation. They wanted to go plug into the body there and say, how can we help you? Who, what is your need? What is the vision and call of the body of Messiah in that country? But to do that, you have to connect. You have to submit. You have to be willing to come under who the Lord is using in that country and say it's not just about my... We're not talking about colonialization here. We're talking about the kingdom of God, the family of God of which we are all a part. But we have to stay connected. Part of that is coming to congregation on Shabbat. I'm telling you, it's good to watch TV evangelists and stuff on YouTube and all of that. I say that loosely. 
We have lots of people that we love and have similar values that we can draw teaching from. But that is not connectedness. That's right. That's not connecting with people that know you, know your children, know your grandchildren, people that can pray for you, right? People that can rub uh, uh, up with you and, and, and minister together to you and have responsibility for one another. Responsibility for the best in one another's lives. That's covenant. Yeah. And the Lord is, is, is the one who is faithful to his covenant. He wants us to be faithful with our responsibility of covenant with him and with one another. And we do that through membership. Verse 18. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now indeed there are many members, yet one body. How do you know where to go to congregation? You pray before the Lord. He leads you and he sets you in the body. You don't just float around and do our own thing, do we? Now, I'm talking to us and to us who are watching in live stream. Because this is an important truth that our culture fights against. Yes, we are part. We are redeemed. We are part of the body of Messiah, but we are part of one another. Even more so than our local congregation of El Shaddai, we are part of the local ecclesia of the city. Connected together in reaching our city, Jews and Gentiles alike. Amen? Amen. We have to be set, connected. We gather together and do things within our community together, revealing the call of God for the body in our region. So we see that local, national, and global body of Messiah of which we are part. But we make our living, we, we make our bread, we draw our strength from the local congregation and being faithful to attend services, prayer meetings, going to Havara groups, uh, connecting with the work of God. I think sometimes... We feel like the congregations or the ecclesias are trying to control our life. Because I live in America, I am free. No one's going to tell me what to do except the Lord. And I say amen, and the Lord tells you to go to a congregation. In his word. Well, I didn't get that from the Spirit. Well, you don't have to get it from the Spirit. It's in his word. His word is just as prophetic and weighty as receiving a spontaneous word from the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. It is. Sometimes we're waiting to get something in the Spirit when He's already clearly marked it in His word what we're supposed to do. Preach. Why am I saying this? Because my life, since I came to faith and rededicated my life at 18, gave my life to the Lord at 12, I have been connected to two communities. In Virginia Beach, where I met my wife at Word of Life Christian Center, we were members there for almost 10 years. And then we moved here in 1990. And I have been a member here ever since. Not because I'm the leader. I was a member here when I wasn't a leader. Because that is how I learn to be more like Yeshua. That is how I learn to sharpen the gift of God that's been given me. That's how I learn to be submitted to leadership that is there for my growth and my good. And to see me grow. And I'm here today because of the faithfulness of leaders who taught and still teach me today. Because I am covenanted with them. I have laid it down. The Lord has set me in as a member. And when the Lord sets something in, it's not going to be blown around by every word of doctrine, that philosophies of this world. There's a setness. There's a securedness. There's a strength that comes from being covenant member in a community. Not just El Shaddai, but somewhere. Where you have given yourself covenantally 
to be responsible and then also walk in the blessings of covenant. Let's continue on in verse 25. He talks about the different parts of the body. He talks about the humble parts and them being more honorable. And in verse 25, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Messiah and members individually. I think we like to spiritualize it that it's, it's more like our body and, and there's no commitment needed. We're part of the body of Messiah in this kind of ethereal, spiritual way and, and, and we're just all part of one another and we feel like we can flow into one congregation and flow out of another congregation. I mean, I've had people come into community visiting, coming up saying, hey, you know, I'd like to take a place of leadership here. And, and I just lovingly look at them and say, you don't understand what it means to be a set member of the body. And people like to flow around and, and, and kind of pollinate and not have really any responsibility or anybody that, that really can look out for their soul and, and they just kind of like to float around. There's a lot of people like that, especially in charismatic congregations. But God has called us to be members, one to another, members with Him. And I believe the Lord is wanting to strengthen our core in our love for our community. We don't have to be best friends with everybody, but we are part of the same community. Yeah. We are family. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know all of your family? As we're putting together this directory and we've prayed over the years over the households and people of our community. I want to encourage you to get to know those who have said yes to covenant at El Shaddai. And have set themselves in community here. And why is this important in February? We're getting ready to have another Toward Covenant class. We have a lot of people who are members, but we also have a lot of people who are friends and are just here and have it learned who we are and us learn who they are and us say, we sense the Lord setting us together in the body. That's why we do Toward Covenant class. <laughs> It's not about control of your life. It's not about anything other than being obedient to Scripture and being set together so that we know the person sitting with us in community has made the same commitment that we have made. That's why it's so beautiful. I mean, God uses marriage as an example of that. Now, I don't believe covenant membership in a congregation is the same level of covenant that there is in marriage. But it is a parallel. It is a commitment that's needed and, and one that's received by us as members. The Lord leads his people to connect to a local body and he sets them in. We then are connected connected arms legs connected fingers by that connection we are connected to the national and global family of God you cannot be connected globally without being connected locally connected is connected if two billion Christians on the earth are all connected at Yeshua as his headship. How are they connected? How are you connected to the body of Messiah to someone in India? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Number one, we're connected through grace. Grace through faith in Yeshua's salvation. 
We are connected to His Lordship and Him as our Savior. If you travel locally and you're connected to a community, wherever you go, you have the same Lord because you're connected and submitted to His Lordship. Number two, being filled with the Holy Spirit, it is a way of connecting. We are connected by the presence of the Lord inside of us. If you travel to see another believer in another country who's connected to that congregation there, to the body of Messiah, there's a connection of heart, a connection of spirit. Something had to happen for the Holy Spirit to be poured out on the Talmudim. The scripture says that they gathered together in one accord and waited for what the Lord had said would happen. One of the reasons it's important to gather each week in a body of believers is as we obey the Lord's commandment to worship together, we wait for what he's going to do in our midst. Prophetically, supernaturally. He heals, he touches lives. Can he do that individually? Sure. But I didn't learn that he could do that individually by individually studying it. I learned what he could do in my life by being part of the body, by being submitted to pastoral gifts and apostolic gifts. Many members in one body. Let's. Uh, Read a few more scriptures here together. How's everybody doing? It's 10 to 12. Amen. Amen. You doing good? Amen. I have to, to jump around in my little thingy here and get back to where I was at. I jumped off my notes. See? Even electronic notes you jump off of. <laughs> Ephesians 2 verse 19. Ephesians 2, verse 19. I'm just going to read a few scriptures now. <clears throat> now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Wow. I don't want to just travel and be a stranger or a visitor my whole life of walking with the Lord. I want to connect with the body and be a member and a citizen with the saints of God in God's house, in the household of God. That is such a beautiful scripture. It's so important. Ephesians 4 Verse 25. As we gather and we're fellow citizens and we begin to see that there's no schism and that we're one together, it is God's love that binds us together. Our love for Him and our love for one another is the most important glue for community, for family. Why do families break apart? Why do people break away? Why do those things happen? They use the term, well, we just fell out of love. We no longer love them. They no longer love us. And I want to say that, that God's love is more powerful than the feeling and the flail of love. His agape love endures all things, believes all things, hopes all things. Verse 25, therefore, put away lying. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. We see the importance of that connectedness, of being members, of, of, of being part of the ecclesia together. Walking in the love and grace of God. I love this in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 33. <laughs> this is 
use, uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. table manners. Mm -hmm. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. How many of you have been taught that growing up, that if even if you're in a restaurant, even if you're visiting someone, that when they're still getting their plate, right, you sit and you wait for everybody to come and then you eat together, right? Yeah. Why? <laughs> What's the big deal? Because there's generations now some that, that don't do that. You know, they're just chowing down. And there's something about fellowshipping and eating together. Yeah. Having that fellowship around a meal and waiting so that we <laughs> all can go in together. It's kind of like opening gifts. You know, we just want to see everyone enjoying God's provision together. It's a great picture of covenant community and why God desires that. 2 Corinthians 9 7. Love is the glue, it's the balm from the Lord. I love this one. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly. Or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Covenantal membership is also about giving of ourselves to one another. Giving in the house of God, but giving to one another. Not begrudgingly, but cheerfully. I know there are testimonies in here, and I have them myself, where the Lord leads you just to do that, that brotherly believing handshake with someone. You ever done that? You got a wad of bills in your hand, and the Holy Spirit said you need to you need to give this to this person. And you go up and say, "Praise the Lord, how you doing?" And they're like, oh, oh. "Just sense that the Lord wanted me to give that to you." And I've learned, as that's happened to me both ways, that as I'm receiving that, I don't let go of the hand. Sometimes it's venison. Sometimes it's things from people's gardens, right? Yeah. Like the gift, the offering that's given, they're being obedient to scripture that comes in. If they're bringing it to me, I want to stand in agreement for abundance. Because they're giving in faith, I want to receive it in faith and believe together with them that their garden will be abundant. That their herds would be abundant. That their treasuries would be abundant. Amen? Why? Because I am covenanted with them. I am set in the body and it, if they are honored and they are successful, I rejoice. If they're going through struggle and wrestling, then I go through it with them. Yeah. But it's just not because it's my job. Mm -hmm. Many of you here I knew before I was ever senior leader. And we were walking these things out together long before there was a title That's right. and roles and responsibilities in that title. There's something greater than just the roles. It's my covenant with you and with another hundred who aren't here today. We have almost 200 members. And we can tell we do when everybody comes at the same time. <laughs> it's funny because the, the people that are here this week won't be the same people who are here next week. <laughs> but because I know everyone, I know how big the family is and how big it's getting and growing. Amen? Amen. I want to encourage you to do the same, to connect that way to the body here at El Shaddai. Uh, to connect and be strengthened that way together in Messiah. I gotta go back again because it shut down. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> Let's go to Ephesians 2. Well, Ephesians 4, to, uh, to be exact. <laughs> 
It's a great scripture for community fellowship together. Verse 1 talks about us being a prisoner and walking worthy of the call. Verse 2 says, With all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Just as by just it just jumped on me. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Now we know we don't have to be in the same geographical location as our Father. You know, my biological father, Robert Jacobson, is in Leroy, Minnesota. 1,100 miles from here. But I am connected to him. And I visit him, and he visits me, and we call, and we talk with each other, and we have fellowship. But there's no way I'll ever not be part of his family. Because I'm connected. His DNA is in me. He's part of me. As we fellowship together as families, we see the how big and how the family grows, locally, nationally, as well as globally. We are part of this amazing global family. First Thessalonians four nine. I feel like this is a scripture for our community. Our community is not only known within our city, but it's known nationally for being just what this scripture says. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. This congregation is known of how much love, how much the love of God is here. That doesn't mean there's not discipline or there's not things that we deal with or realities that we walk through. But when I travel, oh, I have heard of El Shaddai. Of course, we've all heard of El Shaddai. <laughs> I've heard of El Shaddai congregation. Oh, I, I've heard of you. There was a, a visiting group that came here that we hosted, the Tikkun American Board, the AAT, the American Apostolic Team. And there's one of those rabbis that mother lives in Maryland, and he travels ahead of time to, to be with his mother. And then he was coming into Frederick, and he was at a restaurant, and he was talking to them, and, and then he met a pastor that he remembered, and they started talking. He goes, yeah, we're getting ready to to connect to El Shaddai. Uh, the leader there is Todd Westfall. Have you heard of him? And the response was, everyone knows who Todd is. <laughs> everyone in Frederick knows who El Shaddai is. That's not a boast in me personally. That's a boast in our family. We are known for him in us. Hallelujah. And it brings glory to the Lord. I just start crying when he told me. Because that's what I do. <laughs> God is good. He is faithful to us. We have the beauty of his love in our family. I'm just going to read these. You can write them down. You don't have to. Let me just flow a little bit here with them. 1 Thessalonians 3.12 May the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all just as we do to you. Hebrews 10.24 And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. First Peter 1 verse 22 since you have purified your souls 
in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. First Peter three, eight. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tender hearted, be courteous. First Peter four eight. And above all these things have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. First Peter five, verse five. Likewise, you younger people, you know who you are. <laughs> Submit yourselves to your elders. Oh, there's that word. <laughs> to be connected, we have to submit, we have to receive. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. Not to everybody. Gray hairs and no hairs. <laughs> all included. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed in humility. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. That's right. First John. 3 verse 11 for this is the message that you heard from the beginning that we should love one another first John 3 23 and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son Yeshua the Messiah and love one another as he gave us commandment. First John 4.11 Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. First John 4.12 No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. If you are a maverick, if you are by yourself, and you're not connected covenantally to a community, how are you going to be able to allow the love of God through you to be perfected? We have to have people around to love. And some people that it takes more energy to love. <laughs> right? Yes. We have to be around them. We have to, to love them as the Lord loved us. How do we do that? I'm glad you asked. And I'll close with these thoughts. One, number one, is loving the Lord. As we love the Lord, and pour into him and receive his love, then we are filled with his love and are able to reciprocate and give that love to others. His love and our love for him is the glue. He is the source. Mm -hmm. His well never runs dry. He's never out of love. He has never fallen out of love with us. Mm -hmm. <coughs> wow. He won't leave us or forsake us. He will honor his covenant to his own hurt. Even when we don't honor our portion, That's right. he is still faithful. Yes, he is. Number two, love for his word. As we read his word, we fall in love with his moral heart. And his love is manifest in us. And it becomes a glue that keeps us strong and connected. A love for his presence, number three. 
Love for His Spirit and His presence in our midst. Connected to number four, a love of worship. <clears throat> Loving to worship individually and corporately the Lord who inhabits the praises of His people. A good scripture for those is Hebrews 10, 24. I'm not going to read it. I'll just give it to you to look up. Love for worship, Hebrews 10, 24. Next, love for prayer, James 5, 16. To have a conversation and communication with the Lord and with one another. Prayer is communication in the Spirit. Are you communicating in the Spirit with your family? Or are you communicating in the flesh with your family? And all of us probably can say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love to care and serve, Galatians 5, verse 14. There's a call for us to care about what's going on in each other's lives. And to help serve the purpose of the kingdom of God in each other's lives and in our community of faith, our family of faith. The next one is a love to give, 1 Corinthians 9, 7. That there's something in the heart of God that wants to give to others, to benefit others, to help others, to help meet the needs of others. The scripture talks about if we have what's needed and someone asks and we tell them to go and be warmed and fed, mm -hmm. then the love of God is not in us. We are sometimes given things and we have put in our mind what that is for. But sometimes the Lord brings someone in our life that asks for that very thing that we've just been given. Mm -hmm. And that's why he gave it to us. Mm -hmm. To give it to somebody else. You know, I was watching one of the sappy Christmas shows Hallmark. on Hallmark. Oh. I love them. My wife watches them with me. <laughs> My wife likes shows that have a little more plot to them. A little more mystery and intrigue. I'm the, the sappy guy. The, so this one I was watching, and it, and it was about foster care and a foster child. And this foster child kept being given a winter coat, and then later on in the show, he doesn't have a coat because he gave it to another kid that needed a coat. And through the whole show, he's given his coat away. Right? Just because he cares. He knows what it is to have need, and he had something that could meet that need. I was like, that's brilliant. That's awesome. I don't have to figure that mystery out. It's pretty clear how it works. I just have to be obedient and do it when the Lord tells me to, you know, when I see the need and have the ability to meet it. So giving is so important. Having that generous spirit, that generous giving heart, cheerfulness. Because it really is more blessed to give than receive. It's not just about tithes and offerings. It's about a lifestyle of giving, pouring yourself out for people with your gift and your, your, your talent. And then finally, love keeps the unity. 1 Thessalonians 3.12. This glue keeps us together because we can frustrate each other. We can irk each other and grind each other sometimes. And, and we learn. We learn that love is stronger than the emotion of being offended. Love is mightier than our own desire to see a certain thing happen when it doesn't happen. Love is greater than being frustrated or disappointed. Love is greater than bitterness and unforgiveness. Love is mightier than doubt and fear. 
Only God knows the heart of our brothers and sisters, of our family members. We need to respond in obedient love and faith in their times of need, whether they caused it themselves, whether it was attack of the enemy, whether it was just our own stupidity, whatever. Love doesn't ask why you got in the mess, why you're still in the mess. Love gets you out of the mess, cleans you off, and then teaches you how to stay out of the mess. Amen. Once you're already out. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Love is never having to say, mm -hmm. I told you so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> members, we are members of one another, locally committed to the covenant of community. We are members of one another nationally, connected with other congregations, and we are members globally, connected to the family of God in Israel and the nations. Lord, strengthen our core. Yes. Strengthen our commitment to one another, to the call of God in our community, to the values that we all ascribe to. Strengthen our core, Lord. Home is where the heart is. Lord, we're here because you have set us here. You have connected us here. And from this place, you have great exploits for us to do. All over the world. We are grateful for the family of God in El Shaddai Conversation. Let's stand together. We'll get ready to close with the, the blessing as Father Timothy comes. Father, not in a Catholic context, <laughs> but <laughs> in a fatherly context. As he brings the blessing over us as a family. Amen. Amen. You can come join me. We are members of the same family. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Oh, we love you guys. It's good to be part of the family. It's good to have support. To have people to go to, to have people to, to help. It's a good thing. Please join with me.